Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to Bethel Lutheran Church as we celebrate on this Reformation Sunday. The word Reformation means that the church was reformed. It was changed. It was different from what the people were used to. Um, a couple of announcements for those who are here. You should have received a piece of paper when you came in. And we're attempting to be as conscientious as we can be. So when you leave worship today, I'll tell which row is going to leave and we'll go from the back to the front. So please make note of that. Please keep your masks on while you're in worship today. I know I don't have mine on, um, but I'm trying to be a little bit separated from you and it's hard to understand me with it on. Also, uh, as far as singing, we're gonna ask that our singers up here do the singing. So hum along in your mind, sing the words in your mind, but we ask right now as COVID is on the rise that we are mindful of one another. Um, after service, uh, we ask that you just leave today. If it's nice outside, we ask that you congregate if you want to outside to speak to one another. Other than that, uh, you can read what you have in front of you. That's a help to us and welcome to those who are with us. I do want to make one note that the flowers which are gracing our sanctuary today are for the Brighton's 47th anniversary, which will be this week. Congratulations to you. Yay. That's an accomplishment. So for Rick and Norma, we, we give thanks. Let's begin with a confession. As we turn our hearts and our minds to Christ, we begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let's take a moment for silence and for self-examination. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And we sing, A mighty fortress is our God.
I don't know whether anybody who's online understands this, but it is very difficult to not sing A Mighty Fortress is Our God, at least for me. But let us pray on this very special day. Almighty God, gracious Lord, we thank you that your Holy Spirit renews the church in every age. Pour out your Holy Spirit on your faithful people. Keep them steadfast in your word. Protect and comfort them in times of trial as we find ourselves in now. Defend them against all enemies of the gospel and bestow on the church your saving peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading for this day is according to Jeremiah 31, from 31 to 34. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt. A covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them. And I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall know me. From the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. Here ends the first reading. The second reading is according to Romans, the third chapter beginning with the 19th verse. Now we know that whatever the law says, it speaks to those who are under the law, so that every mouth may be silenced and the whole world may be held accountable to God. For no human being will be justified in his sight by deeds prescribed by the law, for though the law comes, for through the law, comes the knowledge of sin. But now, apart from the law, the righteousness of God has been disclosed and is attested by the law and the prophets. The righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. For there is no distinction, since all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. They are now justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God put forward as a sacrifice of atonement by his blood effective through faith. He did this to show his righteousness because in his divine forbearance he has passed over the sins previously committed. It was to prove at the present time that he himself is righteous and that he justifies the one who has faith in Jesus. Then what becomes of boasting? Well, it's excluded. By what law? That Adam works? No. But by the law of faith. For we hold that a person is justified by faith apart from the works prescribed by the law. Here ends the second reading. Please stand for the Holy Gospel, which is found in the Gospel of St. Luke, or St. John, the eighth chapter, beginning with the 31st verse. Then Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him, If you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples. And you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. They answered him, we are descendants of Abraham and have never been slaves to anyone. What do you mean by saying you will be made free? And Jesus answered them, very truly I tell you, everyone who commits sin is a, sin to, is a slave to sin. The slave does not have a permanent place in the household. The son has a place there forever. So if the son makes you free, you will be free indeed. The gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. 
may be seated for the hymn of the day, What Wondrous Love Is This? comes light and out of that light comes life and we are thankful for the life we've been given send your holy spirit to be with us grant us your presence day in and day out that we may bear what is around us and now may our hearts the meditation of our hearts be acceptable you and to you alone, for you are our Redeemer. Christ Jesus, the Lord. Amen. Amen. A grace to you and peace from our Lord and our Savior, Jesus the Christ, who was, who is, and who will always be. How does this sound? Though hordes of devils fill the land, all threatening to devour us. Sound familiar? It sounds kind of like I feel. I don't know about you all, but it really seems as though we're battered on every side. We think we're slipping out of something, and then we find out we're slipping back in. The things are not as nice as they seem, right? As COVID is on the rise. We tremble not, Luther writes, Unmoved we stand, they cannot overpower us. Let this world's tyrant rage and battle will engage. His might is doomed to fail. God's judgment must prevail. One little word subdues him. The power of those words is to remind us that in Jesus Christ we have hope. That's the little word that subdues that which is around us. And we may say, well, but it's still out there. It's still working. It's still heavy duty. Yeah, it is. But we as the people of God stand knowing that that ultimately has no control over us. And yet it feels as though it does. I've talked about it before in worship that uh, I've been to many a cave. And growing up, where I grew up on the Mississippi, we are 80 miles from Hannibal, Missouri, and we're not very far from uh, Nauvoo, where the Normans, are, the Mormons were, and about an hour, oh, maybe two and a half hours from Springfield, where Lincoln grew up. So we'd go to all these places, and when we're in school, we would take our road trips to these marvelous places, and one was down to Hannibal, where we went to the cave there, the Mark Twain cave. 
Well, it is a true fact that Mark Twain and his friend Becky Thatcher were lost in the cave there and up against Injun Joe. And uh, I don't know whether you can read the book anymore, but in the tale of Tom Sawyer, you find the story of them being lost in the cave. So you go into the cave, and as you all know, if you've been in a cave, they take you to the very center of a cave, and then they turn off the lights. And you recognize automatically how dark it is. You can't see your hand in front of you. At one time, they had a, a young girl that screamed out because she couldn't see, and they had to turn the lights back on. But the thought of being lost in that darkness for such a long time, as Mark Twain was and Becky Thatcher was, it is just mind-boggling. Why in the world would I want to stay in darkness when there's light outside? Why would they go into that dark place to play? Which is exactly what they did. They went into the cave not recognizing that the cave itself could swallow them up. And darkness has a way of swallowing us up. On this Reformation Sunday, we really focus on the fact that God brings the light of the world to us. That we are not lost in the darkness, as it may seem at times. And though the devils do fill the land, the hordes of them, we need not live in ultimate fear. At Christmas time, we always read from Isaiah, the ninth chapter and the second verse. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light, and those who lived in the land of deep darkness on them has light shone. And the rest of the chapter talks about how the people of Israel had been overcome with the yoke that was overpowering for them. That they were brought low and then Isaiah turns it around and says yet your joy will become overwhelming this is how it's talked about in John's gospel which we also read on Christmas Eve in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God he was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being with him was life, and the life was the light to all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. Important words for us on this day. On any day, in fact, any day that we pick up God's word, any time we ask God, what is it you have in store for us? Well, he says in John's gospel, the truth. And what is the truth that will set us free? The truth is that God loves us and meets us in the darkest, most darkest, darkest, darkest times of our life if we allow it. And here we sit in the United States of America, and we are in darkness it may be light outside, but I hate to tell you, just because you see light doesn't mean you see. Sometimes we're so overwhelmed and overcome by the darkness around us that we begin to think, well, this is the way it always is. And the reality is it's not. God hopes that we see beyond what we, quote, see. Mark Twain and Becky Thatcher, lost in the cave, only thought of the darkness around them. And they took their hands and they touched everything to get them finally to a place where they could see one crack of light. And then they finally found their way out because as that light began to shine through, even though it was a crack of light, the light began to overcome the darkness, which is what we read happens because Jesus is the light that comes into the darkness, and that darkness will not overcome the light. Luther lived in darkness most of his life. He was in the darkness of sin. He felt guilty for everything. He felt guilty if he sneezed. He felt guilty if he coughed. He felt guilt, guilty just because he breathed. 
And he would go to confession time and time and time and time again because he felt overwhelmed with the darkness that he was living in. And that darkness was in his mind. And the only thing that could free him was what he found in God's word. It wasn't the law that overwhelmed him that could free him. It was the fact that God had promised that the darkness would not be overcome or would be overcome by the light. And it was from Romans that all of a sudden he was freed from the power of sin that he felt. And then he recognized that everyone around him felt as trapped as he did. In our world, people don't even know they're trapped. Maybe it's better to be where they were for a while. To really understand how beaten down and trapped we are as a people. But what I do know is there is beauty and joy in these lessons today. That God chooses to write in our hearts oh, a, new, a new covenant. That everyone knows the covenant. And God has chosen to bring truth which sets us free. And what is that truth? It's that we're no longer bound by the evils of this world, but we're lifted up by the truth of God, which is we are loved. Not despised by God or hated by God. We are loved by God. And maybe we've come so, become so used to hearing that word that we forget what it's like to be truly trapped. Luther's message, which he found in himself through the scriptures he couldn't wait to share with others so held in the words that god wasn't here to burn them in hell to destroy them but to give them life and hope and abundance of all of this who wants to live in darkness when there's light around the corner who doesn't want to seek that light and that light that we seek is jesus christ where do we stand at the foot of the cross? Because it's at the cross that light really does come. You know, it's amazing. Now, we've been praying for Sky Ranch, and the, the fires are still burning. But last night over the internet came pictures of Sky Ranch. And I've been here 36 years in this state, and in 36 years, this is the third major fire that has hit at Sky Ranch and in the area along with the tornado that went right over the camp. And a few things have burned. The grass. Some places where they put the tents up. The high ropes course. But the buildings are still standing. But this was the part that made me cry last night. When I saw the outside worship area called Sundance, and the fire came up, it stopped right at the foot of the cross and went no further. I've always believed there's protection there. At the foot of the cross is where it stopped. Now I know people have lost their homes and, and there are wildlife that have been killed in the midst of this. And it breaks my heart. And it breaks my heart that the fires are growing as rapidly as they're growing. And yet we give thanks to God for the snow that has fallen, right? But at the foot of the cross, for us, is the same thing. The raging fires of sin, death, and the power of the devil stop at the foot of the cross and can no longer hold on to us. We hold on to the cross. And not only that, it's the darkness that comes in the midst of the fires that burn that only Christ can overcome for us. The fires of sin ravage us at times. Not only individually, but they can ravage us as a nation. So holding on to the base of the cross is where life ultimately will come from and where hope comes from and where light comes from. The hordes of devils fill the land. Hmm. But they can't overpower us. We stand. We hope. We believe in the light that can come in Christ. Thank you, Lord.
May the gift of God come to us on this day. And if you find yourself in darkness, whether it's the darkness of sin, the darkness of pain, the darkness of sickness of any kind, maybe it's health issues, mental issues, maybe the darkness that you find yourself in is loss in your family. But what we understand is at the foot of the cross, the breath of life does come. And the truth of God comes, and here is the truth of God. Listen very carefully. You are loved. You are loved by God, not hated by him. What better words can I speak? So let us pray. Oh God, how thankful we are that you have made a difference in our lives. How thankful we are for Luther, who called into being the thoughts you've already had. He spoke them to the people around that they are loved by you. Send your merciful spirit upon all of us. And allow us, O oh Lord, to live as though we truly have a life. Amen. We continue with the words of the Apostles' Creed. Please stand. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated for the prayers of the church. We continue to pray for those who have been overwhelmed by the fires throughout the West. We also lift up before you Pam Gould's family as she passed into God's glory this week. Her service will be this coming Friday. If you desire to go, please talk to me as there is limited space, and that will be at Fairmont. So let us put our hearts and our minds before Christ. Renew and inspire the church in the freedom of the gospel, O God. Where the church is in error reforming. Where the church speaks your truth, strengthen it. Where the church is divided, unify it. Ignite in us the working of the Holy Spirit, Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Hear our prayer. As the earth changes, as mountains shake, and as they burn, as waters roar, may we care for this place as it is a holy habitation for all living things. Gracious Lord, we lift up our mountains to you today. And we pray for those places and people who have been affected by the ravaging movement of the fire. We thank you that Sky Ranch still is intact. And we pray that you keep it holy for those who come to worship you there, to learn of you there, for the youth that have been there over the years. Be with Brad Abbott and staff. We pray for those who've lost their livelihood. And we pray for the animals of the forest, for the elk who have wandered into Estes Park to stay safe. We pray that Estes Park stays whole. For the bears, 
and for the baby bear that was running down the streets of Fort Collins alone. For all the wildlife, Lord, the moose, the wolves, the coyotes, the squirrels. We pray, O Lord, that you would renew the forest and help us to cherish that gift that has been given to us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We lift up Pam Gould's family, Janice and Gail and the family, their stepchildren and grandchildren. Let them rejoice in the life that she's had. We pray for Isaiah, friend of the times, as he has COVID. Let Hampton step on the lane. Aiden, 17 years old, who had a surgery because a pellet gun was shot at him and punctured his eye. For Peggy McKinley, who's Peggy Kirkegaard when she was born, following four surgeries. We pray for healing in the midst of the aneurysms that were removed in the brain. For all who are sick, Lord, in your mercy, Lord, guide us. Our world and our country is divided internally and externally. People are traumatized by the conflict. We ask, Lord, that you would especially bring healing to our own land. Free all from slavery and human trafficking and protect all in harm's way. Lord, in your mercy, oh God, even in death, you free us and give us a place in your house. We give thanks for all our ancestors who have known us through truth and freedom and shown us this. Especially we thank you for Martin Luther today and those who work for the renewal of the church. Lord, in your mercy, listen as we call on you, O God, and enfold in us in your loving arms. This we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who brings light and life and truth. Amen. We continue to live Holy Communion. Remove this. stand. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks. He gave it for them all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. May the body and blood of our precious Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, strengthen you, keeping you in his grace, his truth, and his love, now and forever. Amen. Before we move on, there are prayer shawls on the altar rail today. And we're going to pray that they will be blessed for those who have have spent time and energy to make these beautiful prayer shawls for those who are hurting. And let us pray. Oh God, we thank you for the hands that have created the prayer shawls we find on the altar rail. And we ask, oh Lord, that you would bless them. Bless the people to whom they are given. Enliven them with your Holy Spirit and bring your comfort and your peace. Be with those who use their hands to continue this holy work. This in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Pastor, we would like to express our appreciation. This is past appreciation. Of, and it's been a horrible month for us all, but we'd like to just share words of appreciation. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. And ask the people that are watching, watching to do so too. Well, thank you. What a gift. She also has an article in the Christian Century I read this morning. <laughs> Dolores, great. Thank you. I tell you, we're very blessed here to have people who do ministry even when things are shut down. So the women have been making the prayer shawls at home. We'll be starting up in January, hopefully here, working on our quilts again and prayer shawls in person. That's our hope. Um, we still have Bible study online. Please contact me if you would like to join in on Zoom. It's really easy to click in and be a part of things. And I thank all the people, the people who keep the grounds good here and cleaned up, and the people who serve behind the scenes to make things happen. I'm so thankful. Confirmation is starting up again. We had our first time uh, last Wednesday. Not this coming Wednesday, but the following Wednesday, we will have confirmation again. If you want your child to learn, please contact me. And with that, we, oh, one other announcement. Next week, which will be All Saints Sunday, our worship will go to 10 in the morning. We're moving it back closer to the time we started with, so 10 in the morning, we will be worshiping. You can sign up online or you can call the office. Very important, today's an odd day because there was the snow, but it's very important that you sign up in advance. With that, let's sing our closing, you sing our closing Fall song. Fall back next week. Fall back next week. If you go by your, by your phone, it's not a problem. <laughs> All right. <laughs>
from the back of the church up. So uh, Andre, if you would go first, and then Dolores. 